once you add some of this fruit, it's really, really good. And so Adam, he got that fruit and he's like, mm, okay. And so he ate it. Can you pretend you're eating a piece, the piece of the fruit? Go, mmm. And then they noticed something. You see, did you notice that they didn't have any shirts on? You noticed, right? They didn't, yeah. they didn't have any clothes on. And so now, after they ate the fruit, they noticed. See, before, they didn't even care. But after eating the fruit, remember, they know what's good and bad. And so they weren't afraid. They were ashamed of themselves. And so Adam and Eve said, oh, no, what have we done? So they got just leaves, and then they covered themselves. And then they had to wait because they knew God was going to come soon. And then God came over and said, Adam, Adam, where are you? Do you think God knew what Adam and Eve had done? Yes. Yeah. He's all knowing. He knows. Mm -hmm. But he wanted them to confess. He wanted them to say, Lord, this is exactly what I did. He didn't want them to hide. But they were ashamed and they hid and they hid. And so finally Adam said, I have thought, I'm sorry, I'm hiding. And God said, Well, Adam, why are you hiding? And he said, Oh, the woman, the woman you gave me, she gave me the fruit and and I ate it. So he was playing, he was playing the blame game. He blamed the woman. <laughs> And he said, she, it was all her fault. And then God went to Eve and said, Eve, what happened? Why did you get the fruit? And then she's like, God, it was the serpent. The serpent, he made me. He tempted me. He told me that everything would be okay. And so he went to the serpent and said, serpent, you did a really, really bad thing. And so he had to punish them. Because remember, sin can't be in heaven. And this garden was really nice. And sin couldn't be there either. Because see, they ate a fruit. That made them live forever. And they can't live and sin forever. So God told them they were going to have to get out from there. And God, he punished the serpent and said, Serpent, because he had four legs, you will never walk on earth anymore. You will have to slither in the dirt. And women and everybody will be afraid of you, he said. And that was the serpent's punishment. And the woman's punishment, he, he said, to, God said to her, you will have a hard time having um, children. He said, it will be hard work, and your, your, your husband will rule over you, he said. And then to Adam, he said, Adam, life before was easy for you. All you had to do was pick the fruit. Well, now the earth will be cursed, and you will have to work hard and pull weeds out. So can you guys get up and pretend you're going to pull some weeds? Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay, you pulled the weed. Now you have to dig. Dig. It'll work for that. Dig, dig, dig. All right, now put your seeds in. All right, now put the dirt back in. Now pat it. All right, now water it. Hey, now you have to wait for a couple months before you get your fruits. All right, you guys can sit down. See, now Adam had to work hard. Before, all he had to do was pick the fruits, and now he has to take out weeds. He has to dig, find seeds. Because he can't go to the grocery store or like a garden per place to get seeds. He had to find the seeds himself. And so it was hard work. You see, God, he still loved them. He loved them very much. And he gave them clothes to wear out of fur. And he said, and he when he took them out, an angel came and covered the garden. And he promised something. He said, Adam, Eve, I will send a savior to come and save you from sin. Now, he didn't tell them when this was going to happen at all. No. See, God, he loved them very much. And see, God, he, he wanted to forgive them. So, word up. God, God forgive. Oh, I guess I have to be quicker than that. Word up. God, God forgive. That's right. He's God, he was forgiving them. He loves them, and he was forgiving them. And he said, I will send you a Savior. Now, we know who that Savior is now, right? We know who that Savior is now, right? It's Jesus. And in the Bible, it says in Revelation 1, 3, it says, but, oh, no, sorry, 1, 5, it says, to whom he loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. See, we are free from sin. We are free from that separation. We get to be close with God when we receive him as our own personal Savior. And God, he promised that. He promised that to Eve that one day Jesus would come. But they didn't know when. And so they were waiting for him. And see, I word up. God, God forgives. forgives. That's right. Since God forgives, when you receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior from sin, God forgave you from your sins. And so you have to tell others how they can be forgiven from your sins. And in 2 Peter 3.18, it says, But grow in the grace of knowledge.
knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So you have to grow, all right? So we got to go grow by, what was that stuff in the song? We got to grow by reading and praying. That's right. Reading and praying. We got to read the Bible and pray and ask God to help us to witness. Remember a big word? Witness. Witness, witness to others about how they could be forgiven from their sins as well. And so Adam and Eve had to wait for that Savior. It had to wait to be forgiven. Now, they had to wait, but maybe you're still waiting, and you haven't received the Lord Jesus as your Savior. You can do that today, and it's not hard. And in the Bible, it says here in Romans, Romans 10, 13, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So anyway, it doesn't matter who you are, or what's your name, or how old you are, or where you live on earth. It says anyone who calls on the Lord's name can be saved and will be saved from their sins, okay? So all you have to do is believe with all your heart that Jesus did die on a cross for your sins and that he rose again on the third day. He didn't stay dead. He rose again and is now in heaven preparing a place for you. So would you bow your head and close your eyes? If you would like to learn more about how you can receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior and would like to pray that lovely prayer, can you please show me by looking up at me? All right, you may all look up now. If you looked up at me, you can meet one of us teachers here at this chair after club, and we can show you from the Bible how you can receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Yay! All right, so I need you all to stand up. I want to sing a song. So...
Christian. Good, 
I think it's good, you know, once the rain comes down, then the dust can settle, and maybe we can plant corn. But it was getting heavier, the wind was blowing heavier, and the dust was everywhere, and soon they couldn't see. So Madame Morisot said, maybe we should go home. She thought, she didn't want to go home. She hadn't seen Victor at all. She was scared that the death curse that her father put on her had actually come true, and that he was dead. And she told her mom about this. And Madame Morisot said, no, Victor's going to be fine, you know. His God, the one true God, is so much more powerful than the voodoo spirits. And so they were walking and walking, and then slowly the wind started pattering down and started drizzling. It started getting harder and harder. I want everyone to start just lightly patting. You know, that's the rain. It's a little drizzling. Now get on your knees. Pat your knees. It's getting harder. It's getting a little harder. Let's start clapping. Oh, yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Soon the rain was coming down in buckets, and it was so hard for them to go back and the mud on the ground, it was so slippery. Tifan was slipping and you know her mom was slipping. And so finally they were climbing up the steep, steep mountain and it was so hard. And then finally Tifan actually slipped and she fell and her mom caught her, but it was too late. See, there was a really sharp rock and it cut right through Madame Orislo's shoe and cut through her foot. And so there was a really, really nasty blood. There was all of this blood and there was this big, big cut have you guys ever gotten a cut before on yes. your foot? Like yes. Scrapes or bruises? Did that hurt a little? Yes. Yeah, did you guys put a band-aid on it? Yes. yes. Yeah? Well, see, back then in Haiti, they didn't have band-aids. So, Madame Orsla had this huge cut on her foot, and she had nothing to cover it up with. It was just bleeding, it was getting worse, and it was so, so painful. But, you know, she continued anyways, and she told Tifam, we can't go home, we have to go to the mission center. But Tifam, she was really scared. She didn't want to go to the mission station. That's where Victor was. That's where all the missionaries were. That's where the big black book that talked about Jesus was. And so she said, no, no, let's just go home. But the rain was getting so hard and it was pouring. So finally, they just ran and they knocked on the first door they found. And op someone opened the door. And who do you think opened the door? Victor. Victor, that's right. Victor opened the door. And Tifa was so scared she hid behind her mom. But when Victor saw... Madame Oriskel and Tifa. Do you think he slammed the show and shut and said, sorry, we're closed? <laughs> yes. No. 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 He opened the door and said, quickly, quickly, come in or you'll catch a coat. Hold. And so they ran into the door and Tifa said, M M Mama's foot, it's, it's bleeding and it's cut. And, you know, Victor, he looked at it and he said, we have to get help right away. We have to call Granny Holderman. See, Granny Holderman, she was a really wise old woman and she was really smart and she, was, she would definitely take care of of Madame Oristel's foot. And so Granny Holderman came over and she bandaged Madame Oristel's foot. And, you know, Tifa, she's kind of sitting in the corner. She doesn't know what to do and she's so scared. And all of a sudden something catches her eye. And it's a big black book, just like the one she saw last week at the market. And so she looked at it and she's like, oh no, that's the book that talks about Jesus. That's the bad book that tells all of these lies. That's the book that makes dad angry. And so she hid away from it, but you know, as Granny Holderman was taking care of Madame Oristel's foot, she said, little girl, why don't you go, you know, look at the, read this big black book over there. It has so many wonderful stories. Now, Tifa, she didn't know what to say. She didn't want to talk to this woman. She didn't want to read this book. But she said, I, I, I don't know how to read. And I, I'm scared of that black book. And now Granny Holderman, she laughed a little. And she said, oh, little girl, don't worry. This book tells so many amazing stories about this man who's so powerful he could heal the blind, the blind could see afterwards. He helped the lame, and they could walk again. He even raised some people from the dead. Now, Tifa, do you think she believed her? Mm. No, she said, that's impossible. What kind of man is this? My dad is the best witch doctor in town. Even he can't do that. Randy Holderman said, this man is not just any man. He is God himself. His name is Jesus, and he has powers that you, no one else has because he was perfect and he was the son of God. And now, Chief, at this point, she was like, no, 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 these are all lots. But Madame Oristel, her mother, said, tell me more about this man. So as Granny Holderman was binding up her foot and putting on medicine so it wouldn't get infected and dirty, she was telling her about Jesus. And Chief, she was covering her ears as close as can. She was closing her eyes because she didn't want to hear. But slowly, her hands fell off and she listened. But she was so scared because she didn't know what to believe anymore. And so the rain was getting harder and harder, and there was thunder and there was lightning, and she was so, so scared. 
but she still wanted to go home. So when Granny Holderman said, we should probably pull out the mats so you can stay overnight. I mean, it's too, it's too far and you know, your house is too far away and there's so much rain. She ran for the door. She ran as fast as you could. Everyone stand up. Run as fast as you can in place. Run as fast as you can. Okay, everyone pretend to open a door. And then there's huge wind, so everyone just kind of stumbled backwards a little. Okay, good job, everyone. Sit down. See, the wind was so strong, it pushed Tifa right back into the room. She couldn't go anywhere. She wasn't strong enough. And so, you know, Madame Orso said, it's too strong. The wind is too powerful. The river's probably flooded. We should probably stay overnight. We'll leave early in the morning. So Chi Fang, she was tossing and turning at night. She couldn't sleep. And finally, in the very, very early hours, when the sun was finally peeking out, Madame Orso shook her awake and said, quickly, Chi Fang, we have to go home. Otherwise, we'll have to stay here for a couple more days because it looks like the rain is going to get worse. So look how dark it is outside. Can you see outside if you were outside in such weather? No, you might need a flashlight or something, but Madame Oristel and Tifam, they did. They knew the way home, and in order to get home, they had to cross this big, big river. This river, you know, when rain comes down, the river gets worse, and so the currents are crashing over, and it looked really dangerous. There were probably sharp rocks underneath, but Madame Oristel took Tifam by the hand and said, quickly, if we hurry, we might be able to make it. And so they ran as fast as they could, but the current was so strong, and so it was so strong that, you know, Tifang, Madame Orista, almost fell down a couple of times. And finally, when they made it to the other shore, they were so wet, everyone wiped the water off of your brow. Oh man, you're so wet. Ooh, so gross. Your clothes are sticking to you. Tifang noticed something. Mama, the bandage on your foot, it's gone. And, you know, it must have hurt a lot, right? But Madame Oristo, she didn't say anything. She just kept limping onwards as fast as she could. And finally, when they got home, Oristo opened the door and said, come on in, come on in, I've been worrying sick about you. Tifam, she was so sad. She said, Papa, Papa, please make this rain stop. Do you think Oristo could stop the rain? No. No, Oristo couldn't stop the rain. But he thought he was powerful. And he thought that because he pleased the spirits every single day, he had power. But then he heard those words. Tifam said, I promise I'll never go to the mission station ever again. And now Oristel was so angry. Put on your angriest face. Pretend you're Oristel. Oh man, those hooligans. Yeah, okay, everyone, regular face. Oristel was so angry. He said, you did what? You went to the mission station? Man, the spirits are so angry now. You can't please the spirits now. They're angry. They're going to send down this rain for a long, long time because they know that you went to the mission station. Tifam, she was so sad. And she told her dad, Papa, you didn't even look at mom's foot. It's all swollen now. And just like that, Oristel's anger was gone. And he looked at Madame Oristel's foot and said, Wife, why won't you let me give you a voodoo charm to make it better? Madame Oristel said, Because these voodoo charms don't work. The only thing that works is the one true God. And he didn't say anything after that. See, Oristel, he knew that his wife hadn't been wearing her charm, and he was still angry and upset, but he was worried. And so for three days, the rain came down, and it was pouring, it was howling, and maybe Tifam, she was just shivering in the corner, because they didn't have big blankets like we have, they didn't have nice air conditioning and heating, they lived in a really small hut, and so they were really scared. And so on that third day, someone knocked on the door, and it was still raining, and so who do you think went through the entire storm to get to Tifam's house? Victor. Victor, that's right. Good job. So Victor came to the door and he said, quick, quick, you guys have to leave. The rain loosened all of the rocks on the mountain. So now there's going to be a landslide. You have to leave because your house is closest. You might die. Please leave. Everyone else has already left. Come with me to the mission station. And Orso said, you fool. I've been pleasing these spirits for so many years. They will protect me and my family. They won't hurt any one of us. The spirits, they know I'm a good man. But Victor said, the spirits can't do anything for you. Only person that can do things for you is the one true God. Only God can protect you from this. And so, you know, or so he was getting angry and angry. But Victor, he continued to talk about God and how much he loved him. And how much that he wanted us to be with him and to trust in him, even though we all have sin. And when Orso heard this, he laughed and he was like, ha! What 
does you, what do you know about sin? See, Victor is smiling. He said, the Bible tells us that we all have sin in our memory verse today. It says in the Bible, in Romans 3.23, let's read it together. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. See, Victor, he told him this, and he showed him in the Bible where it was. And Victor, you know, he tried. He told Orisol about all of these amazing things about Jesus, and Orisol said, how dare you come into my house and tell me these things? You know, the spirits, they're going to be angry at you. I'm going to cast another curse on you. But Madame Orisol said, stop. Tell us more about this Jesus. Tell us more about this God. I noticed that the people who believe in this Jesus, they don't wear a charm. They don't wear a voodoo charm. Why is that? See, Victor told them that because they believed in God, they didn't need spirits. They didn't need charms to protect them. They would trust in the one true God. And so, Adam Orisol said, I believe in this God. Do you think Orisol was really happy about that? No. No, he was so mad. He said, get out of my house right now. I don't want to see you ever again. Get out. How dare you tell these lies to my wife and my daughter and the people of the village? And Victor, even though he wanted to stay so badly to tell more about Jesus, he knew that this was in his house and he had to leave. So he said, okay, I will leave. I will be praying for you, Orisol. And Madam Orisol, God will protect you. He will always be with you. And so he left. And so when he left and shut the door, everyone was silent. And then Oristel burst out. He was so angry. He said, how could you believe these lies that they tell you? How could you believe this? This man, Jesus, he is fake. He is fake. Only the voodoo spirits can protect you. Madam Oristel said, no, you're wrong. These spirits, these voodoo spirits, they are a lie. They cannot protect us now. The one true God is the one I trust to protect. And soon. So, Oristel was so, so angry. He said, I'm going to make sure my death curse on Victor now will finally work. So he took this big sharp knife and he opened the door. No! Madame Orisol shouted, don't do this. And Orisol said, I have to because this man is telling you lies. And so he was going to kill or up Victor. Tifan was watching and she was so scared. She knew what? Victor did not. I mean, she knew that Victor had was wrong telling her father about these things about Jesus, but she didn't want him to die. And so as Victor rushed through the, not Victor, whoo, as Orso rushed through the door with his knife, and the door slammed shut behind him, all Tifan could think of was, was Victor going to die? You'll have to come back next time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're going to learn another song. And it's Do You Believe? Do you believe it? It says, do you believe, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe he died for your sin? See, there's lots of people, like we heard in our missionary store, that don't believe. And so we're asking the question, do you believe to know more about him? Do you believe that he came to save us and he makes us clean within? Do you believe? So it's a great question to ask friends. Um, when you have received the Lord Jesus as a Savior, it's a perfect question to ask people to know if they uh, that Jesus died for their sins and that he saved them. And says, do you believe in Jesus, that he died for your sin, and if you will receive him, he will come to live within? So it's talking more about how they could have their sins forgiven, and what Jesus has done for them. And then back to the chorus. No, that's not right. uh, Do you believe, do you believe in Jesus? Uh, do you believe he died for your sin? Do you believe that he came to save us, and he makes us clean within? Do you believe? So that is the chorus. And then, yes, we believe, so when... Then when someone receives, they say, yes, we believe, we believe in Jesus, we believe he died for our sin. Yes, we believe that he came to save us and he makes us clean within. Yes, we believe, yes, we believe. So it's great to believe. See, everyone's jumping out here. Yay, we believe, we believe everything that Jesus has done for us so we can have our sins forgiven. And that's the song. So it's, it's more to this, right? Yes. So we're going to stand up. Stand up.
Yes. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. 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 All right. Well, we're gonna play a game. Now let's see if you really were paying attention. So we're gonna play boys versus girls. Okay? Uh -oh. so there's two boys and two girls. Okay. So what? Uh, we're gonna be asking you questions, and then you guys are gonna pick. I'm gonna put them over here so I can be closer to you. You're gonna pick little um, papers, and it has numbers. So you'll let me know what the number is. And according to the number, the other team will do the action, okay? Okay. All right. So you guys will be team one and team two, okay? All right. So team one, how was, how was Adam and the animals created? Do we pick a number? No, 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 no. You guys answer and then pick a number. Oh. Yeah. So how, how were they created? Us? Is it just us, right? Just you two, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They were created... God. Yeah, that's right. They're created by God. Good job. All right. See, we can pick one. Why do you think of numbers like that? Yeah, tell me the number. Three. Three. All right, girls. You're going to have to say the memory verse loudly. Ooh. <laughs> loudly. Oh. And we'll help you out. All right. Romans, Romans 3, 23. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. Good job, girls. All right, your turn. How long has God loved you? Forever. That's right. You guys can pick a number. Oh, you get to keep the number you had. But yeah, just keep it. Okay. 12. 12. All right. You boys are ready. He says, clap your hands three times loudly. And three times slowly, or softly, sorry. Um, loudly first. All right, this is backwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. All right, your turn. Um, what one rule did God give to Adam? You know this one. Yeah, don't eat, don't eat the apple. <laughs> what apple? From the tree. From what tree? From good and evil. The knowledge oh, of good and evil. Good job. <laughs>
Two. Two. Boy, this is touch your toes three times as fast as you can. <laughs> Stand it up. Oh. But the trick is, when you touch your toes, then you have to stand back up. I know you're back down. Oof. No bending knees either. We want to see it? this on the front. I'll see that later. Are you going to do that? Oh, you can do it. Right? I'm worried about your yeah. bag. Yeah. All, right. All right, go. Go. <laughs> you're bending your knees. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, good job. I'm Talk about the, the, the lies. That's right. Good job. Yay, pick a number. Five. Five. Girls, you have to turn around five times as fast as you can. Ready? Oh, yeah. That's better. Ready? One, two, three. One. One. 